So a very good evening to all. Um, it's, it's, it's a pleasure and an honor for me today evening amidst the festive season here in Delhi today to uh, bring on stage uh, to our virtual stage a very, very renowned and a very important uh, lecture and speaker. And uh, for that, I would like to invite Dr. Anshri Prakash, our President Delhi RI, to kindly introduce our uh, master faculty and guest of honor today for the masterclass evening. Ma'am, please. Thank you, Shalini. Namaskar to all participants and the faculty on the panel. It is a proud privilege and honor today for Delhi Area to welcome Dr. Anabarasi for the Delhi Masterclass. He is uh, working as a consultant radiologist at Dr. Aran Diagnostic Center in Coimbatore. Having completed his medical education in India, he moved to the UK where he worked under stalwarts like Dr. David Cosgrove and Professor R. Whitehouse. While writing his FRCR exam, Dr. Anna Barasu won the prestigious Rohan Williams gold medal. He was also awarded the Cook Traveling Fellowship by the Royal College, which he used to work in Harvard. Dr. Anna Barasu then moved to India and has been associated with IRIA in various capacities. At present, at present he's president of the Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry chapter. He's also vice chair of the Indian College of Radiology, which you know is doing great work. And he's also the brain behind introducing the membership of the Indian College of Radiology, which is in its uh, really, it's just been born, so to say, and he's going to see it uh, through, uh, through flotation. Dr. Anabarasu also runs the very popular Chennai and Coimbatore FRCR training courses. And I've had the pleasure of attending the, that course some years back. And I can say with all honesty that it was one of the best courses for FRCR where individual attention was given to all students and the it was not checked as a mass but individually papers were checked and where the students were told what was um, wrong and what how could they improve it so uh, dr anabarasu i think is there is nobody better than him to take us through the do's and don'ts of how to write that exam and i would request sir to also uh, touch upon the membership exam for the indian college of radiology if time permits uh, warm welcome to you sir today Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Shalini and uh, Dr. Anjali. Um, and uh, very nice to see Athin again, our good friend. Let me just go for share screen and we'll start. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Right. Okay. So exam prep, do's and don'ts. And when uh, Dr. Uh, Anjali and Dr. Shalini called me to give this lecture, um, I was uh, I was little sort of unprepared in the sense I have got everything related to FRCR, but all the other exams need to be covered because people who are going for the exams, not only just FRCR, uh, but also all the other exams as well. So I have done put together some slides and did some research as well behind it. Um, so again, thanks to Delhi chapter of IRA for doing this masterclass. It has been a very, very successful program, a fantastic effort by the faculty, uh, by the office bearers. And of course, uh, Athen and all the good friends and students whom I am sort of having the privilege of talking to you today. So what are the do's? The exam prep is an actually an art, as you all know from your childhood. But the key point is, um, you know, gnothisutan. I don't know whether you actually able to pronounce that. It is the little Greek word, gnothisutan. There are YouTube uh, articles and videos which will say how to pronounce this. Uh, basically, to know thyself. Okay. 
uh, know yourself is your important point when you're doing an exam prep. You know, how much you know, you know, how you can handle the exam, you know, all these things are very, very important. But there are articles in, you, in, in Google will tell you that this is a very silly thing, how to know yourself. It is just not possible to know yourself. But if you go back to our philosophy of ancient India, you know, some of the same ancient Greek, it's all about knowing yourself. Once you know yourself, then, you know, things are much more slightly easier in life as well as in the exam. Uh, but other than that, you should also know about uh, this gonorisotrus alios. You can pronounce it whatever the way you want. It means know the other side as well, right? So that is translates into what the examiner wants. So every exam, if you're able to give the examiner what they want, you're able to tell them and inform them this is what you know, they are very happy to pass you. So this is the sort of key point. Know your knowledge, know where you are standing and know what the exam or examiner wants. So how to know the other side? So that is the next question comes. How do you know about the other side? How do you know the exam? The exam related official information is already there in the website. It's actually surprising that many students actually don't go through it. There are a lot of information is there and they actually have to make some effort to continuously read all the information and the links available in the official site. And then second thing will be discussing with colleagues who took the examination. The people who has taken the examination will give you lots and lots of important points that will help you to prepare for the exam. And then training for the examination with someone who has taught many students, meaning a, a teacher, maybe a course, or maybe somebody who has been a, your colleague for a long time, somebody who has been a mentor or a guide. Uh, with them, when you train with them or sort of have a discussion with them, spend a couple of days or one week or with them, will help you a lot towards the exam. And of course, your own student's instinct is quite useful, which we all, by, the, by this time, when you reach a level of uh, MD radiology or DNB radiology, you would have developed your own student's instinct because you've already gone through a lot of tough, tough exams as a medical student. Uh, I'm just going to show one slide from our Chennai FRC year 2B course, just for a uh, gist of, uh, to, to reiterate some points. Um, this is a slide from our course. I'll just show this uh, in the third or fourth slide and say things are getting serious. Uh, our experience, I say, what is my experience of teaching you? you know, I just tell them that I've been teaching FRC students for the past 21 years. And uh, you know, we got the experience in UK. We worked in UK for so many years. We taught so many people there and we are doing it here. We are taught so many. So all those things we do. And the most important thing is, I reiterate them, what is your question? You are all consultant radiologists. Most of you are. Some of you are maybe students just writing the MD exam. But once you pass MD exam in India, you are a consultant. You may be a senior registrar. You may be a junior registrar. You may be a senior resident. You may be a junior consultant. But otherwise, most of the hospitals, most of the clinics, most of the private side, you are a consultant. So the consultant position and your, 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 your experience, your confidence of passing your MD and DNB, DNB exam will give you some degree of confidence and some degree of ego. And that sometimes is a hurdle towards passing these exams. So I reiterate them for these two days, you are my students. You are my students and I teach them. So when you hear, when you absorb, when you actually handle um, the whole experience as a student going for the exam, you do it better. Because you have done it very well so far all these years because you have been a student. And then I tell them about the aims of this course that's showing you common cases, test you honestly, tell you where you are standing and teach you the best method of preparation, which may be variable with individuals and trying to motivate you to do better. And that's the most important thing as a teacher, as a course director, I want to motivate you because you don't want to pass this exam. You don't go to the exam just passing it, but you want to do it better. You have to show that, that you are a better radiologist than the, anyone who has taken the exam on that particular day. So be a student to any exam or examiner is the most important aspect of the attitude you should have when you go for the exam. And then this comes from respecting the exam. So any exam, whatever you're going to take, you've got to respect it. You can criticize it, you can dissect it, you can throw it to the dustbin after you have passed it. You know, Before you pass it, you have to give the respect. No exam is perfect. No exam is perfect. We all know that. Even the 10th exam is not perfect. NEET is not perfect. NEET PG is not perfect. But we have to have a, some sort of a way where we can differentiate students and that's why the exam 
is called as a necessary evil which has been there for every speciality every grade of life so no of course no man is also perfect but women are perfect right so the key thing is divide the exam into parts which is already given to you in front of you because it's an official information but the preparation also should be into parts so md exam let's take it in the university based most people pass as it why and i leave it to you for your own discretion to decide on that uh, you got a theory four papers again varies with the university you got a viva you know usually they give you spotters of four of 40 spotters two long cases two short cases and table viva and then you know obviously there is an internal examiner who sort of uh, reasonably you know how to say hello and all those things and then um, problem for most is actually in the md exam is not the exam but finishing the thesis in time and most of you actually leave it to the last minute and that actually affects the preparation for the exam and this has been told to everybody even when they join the first year decide on your topic try and do things and for various reasons most most md students finish it on the third day just the day before the last uh, day of submission coming to dnb dnb has got four theory papers which is 100 marks each a practical exam which is 25 oski stations of six marks each which is an online projection directly from national board each are given four minutes of duration a uh, table viva which is uh, 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 based entirely on the non core subjects like legal and research equipments instruments including intervention radiology contrast media physics radiation protection so these are all given with four separate examiners in four separate tables and then you are given again a short case of viva one examiner in each room and there are two long cases which you have to discuss with two examiners in each room so you have to pass by taking uh, appearing you know uh, taking the 50% of total marks will help you to pass the practical exam in dnb if you fail theory um, you have to you know you, you will have to write it again but if you fail practical after passing theory you can take the practicals separately this is a knowledge which is aware and it's already given to you coming to edir the european diploma in radiology exam by the european board of radiology which we have got a memorandum of understanding through iraa so that it is conducted for the past 3 years in delhi which actually saved a lot of money for a lot of our students particularly during this covid period where they couldn't travel and many of the students find the experience is very rewarding and uh, some of indian students are some of the best to give the best results all over the world and this is told by some of the edir staff so you will be getting a first session which is around 70 to 80 questions a mrq multiple response questions 90 minutes so one question which will have you will have to select the best answers one maybe one best answer may be there and there is a short cases for 90 minutes and then there is something called core so the clinically oriented reasoning and evaluation which is for 90 minutes and about 10 cases this is like a long case so each case has got uh, multiple uh, several levels of uh, images starting from x ray and then ultrasound and then maybe ct and mr and uh, one of the things is about the, once you answer a plain film you cannot alter the answers uh, once you can go back but you cannot alter the answers uh, to certain certain questions once it is uh, typed so edir is a single sitting exam you go in the morning uh, you start registration and we actually conducted to the european time so we started at around 12 12 30 and then we finished by 5 5 30 and um, so that's the edir exam and one sitting it's all it covers everything including some aspects of anatomy physics um, uh, some degree or some pathology radiation protection plus all the core subjects and the long cases and short cases everything is covered in a single online exam FRCR exam is again a Royal College of Radiologists flagship exam. This exam is a, a, a very coveted exam, very important exam because it gives you the opportunity to go and work in UK. But the EDIR exam doesn't open that much avenue in Europe. It, uh, as you know, that it is, it is, it is more of a prestige rather than actually you are trying to actually go and work in Europe. Uh, but it does give some access to certain fellowships. If you go to the website, it does sort of. Uh, it gives you a lot of information on uh, European uh, EBR fellowships uh, for which you are eligible to apply, uh, apply. particularly if you pass to EDIR, then there is a, um, there is a better consideration. FRCR exams, because there's a lot of vacancies in the National Health Service Hospitals in UK, there's a lot of demand for radiologists and, and, and UK population is 
um, aging and uh, there are not many people are going into medicine, they need manpower from abroad to support their service. So it has got a part 1A anatomy, part 1B physics, and then part 2A, which is sort of two papers of single best answer. And then part 2B is the rapid reporting, which will have 30 cases, which will have normals. They're all x-rays. Most of them are x-rays. And then cases writing will be like six long cases. And there is viva, which are four vivas in each of 15 minutes. There will be a one viva of 30 minutes with two examiners and another viva of 30 minutes with two examiners. So this is, a sim, uh, this is the sort of outline of the FRCR exam. So you have to pass separately anatomy, separately physics, and separately part 2A before you can attempt part 2B. And, and, and most of the time, anatomy and physics can be done as a single sitting, but usually conducted on two different days. Um, but the 2A has to be applied after passing part 1, and 2B has to be applied after passing part 2A. And uh, let's go um, to the MSER exam. This is an exam which has been uh, uh, mooted through our ICRA and IRIA is um, is uh, something which is I will allude to at the background, but this is a much higher level exam which uh, has been introduced because we already have EDIR which has been uh, uh, a collaboration effort between IRIA and the EDIR and it has got an anatomy again it will have both true and false and the image based error question like in FRCR. It'll have a physics which will be true and false again, uh, something similar to FRCR and something similar to EDIR. Uh, but 2A has got three papers of core radiology knowledge. Uh, again, it will be a single best answer or multiple response questions. And then there is a 2B which will have an essential radiology reporting which will have 50 cases. It will include normals, x rays, and it will have some emergencies. And then there is a long cases writing which is 10 cases, uh, which will have two hours to write those 10 cases. And all these are done online. And then you got next step, which is 3A, which is now we are going to the level where it's sort of an American board type or Australian type of exam. But there is an OSCE of six stations, which is something similar to uh, similar to um, DNB, but the OSCE is real OSCE in the sense you are actually uh, demonstrating, including live ultrasound technique, and then there are a few other things with the examiner. And 3B will be viva six stations. And again, it will be subspecialities will be covered. Individual subspecialities will be covered, which is little um, uh, similar to American board exam where they have got up to about eight vivas and each of them will be dedicated to uh, a one subspecialty. So this is the MACR exam, which has been outlined. The Franzer or American board exam, the slight variations are there. Uh, pathology is a full paper in France. I think after anatomy and the physics, you should write a pathology exam, which will be, I think, 100 questions are there. It will be, again, an online exam. An American board is slightly more complex, more intensive. You've got to write exam for like almost seven to eight hours, sometimes even nine hours in a particular day. And that can happen for two, three days. And it has got components and they are more flexible and changing more often depending upon the advancements of science. And some, they actually made it uh, completely online recently and which would draw a lot of criticism, um, criticism from some, some uh, partners of America. And now they are reconsidering the whole thing again. So uh, American board is long-term plan. You, it, it has to, your, your, the training here will only give you one or two years of consideration when you go to US. And then you have to go through the entire uh, process of training, education, fellowship before you will be able to write your American board exam, maybe in your fourth or fifth year of uh, residency. And uh, once that is done, then obviously your certified American board for that particular state. And then depending upon where your work, you know, you become an attendee or a consultant, uh, whatever. So every exam site has got complete information on all this, whichever the way you want to write. Okay, It is surprising that many candidates do not read them fully. So that is the first step. If you wanted to do this, you just go and read. And these informations, they are very dynamic in the sense that informations do change. In fact, they actually inform you in the first hand, whatever is information provided is only for this particular day. And then they will suddenly put another notice saying that this information will be may be modified uh, because of these, these uh, changes. And so what do you do? You read them and then understand them fully and do all the sample questions. Now, sample questions is something which is already there in the website. And again, it is surprising many people are not doing the sample questions. 
in, in fact, it has got the answers. And if the same question sometimes comes in the exam, many people actually don't know the answer. In spite of it, it is there already on the particular college website. And, and, you know, so these are all sort of bad exam preparation techniques, which you don't want to do. So you have to get the balance to core knowledge to the core knowledge for actually taking the exam comes from three areas of preparation. One is the conceptual knowledge. You have to read standard general book like this is starting for somebody who is from the first year. You know, I wanted to get the core knowledge right towards all sort of major exams. What should I do? So it comes from three areas. So first you have to have a standard general book. You can have Saturn, you can have Ringer or whatever, but one particular standard general book, which will give you the idea about everything. That is the conceptual knowledge. The concepts need to be get it right. And then the factual knowledge is specific topics, facts, percentages, which will Danner, Google, various sites, diagnostic imaging series, particular disease related topics will give you the factual knowledge needed. So you need to have both because when it comes to Viva, both factual knowledge and your concept, both are going to help you to arrive at a diagnosis. Uh, without that, in, in real practice also, it is the same thing which is going to happen. So both knowledges are important, but to get that factual knowledge, you have to have, get the concepts right. So for that, you need to have, a, this is again disappearing from the general uh, radiology residence thing, that they don't actually read a one book from uh, cover to cover. They just sort of read patches and patches and patches. The knowledge is also patchy and patchy. So when it comes to concepts, they find it really hard. So the actual uh, training in the three years, instead of completing the whole radiology concepts in three years, they are keep learning anatomy and concepts in their fourth and fifth year as a consultant. And uh, you know, you can blame the uh, faculty, or you can blame the teachers, you can blame the students, but. It, it, it should be like, like you are, you are simple things like medicine, you know, when you are in anatomy, you are reading Chaurasia. When you read Chaurasia, you know that, you know, you get the concepts, right? You know how to read the exam. And again, for physiology, you've got a book like that. You have to have a book, which is sort of, you can go back and verify and check. And that book is something which is your backbone, which will not be, that knowledge is not, it will be get overlapped with various other knowledges, but one book, this is something which I have personally felt and, and I'm recommending it. Then comes the skill of displaying your knowledge. You know, that need to be done as a part of your understanding these three areas. How do you display your knowledge? Doing papers, doing posters, presentations. This is where your skill of displaying knowledge is actually uh, gets honed, gets sort of uh, refined. You have to actually go and do a presentation in somewhere. You have to do posters. When you do that, your particular knowledge in that particular subject becomes really, really good. You do practice viva. First year, if you can get practice viva with somebody every day for half an hour, it's great. And discussion with people. So all these areas, going to meetings, you know, or going to tumor board meetings or whatever, where you get up and talk to people. So this type of knowledge display will get you the balance of uh, ex uh, exhibiting your conceptual and factual knowledge, understanding that particular case, and then displaying it. And that that boards very well when you actually go and sit in the exam and if you're shown a case, uh, which is you don't know completely, but your, your, uh, your braveness there at that particular point in handling that particular case will actually uh, make you come out of this uh, black hole. So let's dissect now FRCR. So FRCR has got these components. You've got an anatomy exam, you've got a physics exam, you've got an MCQ exam, um, which is SBA. It shouldn't be MCQ, it should be SBA. Part 2A, and then cases writing, uh, and then rapid reporting, and then VIVA. Um, so, uh, so anatomy preparation is actually easy. If you have passed MD radiology or DNB radiology, you will pass anatomy. There's no, uh, not much in terms of preparation because you, they have to know. But in UK, they take the exam after eight or 10 months of uh, into radiology training. So that means there is a bit of preparation is involved. In MICR, the anatomy can be taken after 12 months of preparation. So after your first year, you can actually take your anatomy exam. So I just have divide that the simple, there will be an image, there is an arrow mark. And it will be a question is asked. And the question can be uh, what is called level one question, level two question, or level three question based on uh, based on the uh, based on the difficulty of the question. Uh, most of the questions will be level one. They'll ask you what is this. So, for example, look at this. I will just put a CT scan 
I just put an error mark towards the masseter muscles. So the first question can be, what is this error structure? So you can just write right masseter muscle, and that gives you full mark, right? So the examiner knows that you know this is masseter, but they wanted to test you a bit more. They will tell you which which nerve supply uh, which supply this structure. So what is the nerve supply of the structure? Then you have to think, you have to know this is masseter and this is a masticator muscle. It is supplied by the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. So you have to write mandibular division, bracket maybe V3 of the trigeminal nerve. Then that's the right answer. And then they will ask a little more, what is the origin of this structure? So you have to know the origin and the insertion of this masseter muscle. You should know it is originating from the sagomatic arch and, and sort of inserting into the ramus of the mandible. So... This is sort of a level three type of thing, but most of the time in FRCR, the first two will be the, uh, for example, simple things like foramen oval, they will ask you, what is this? Or they can ask you, what is the uh, nerve which is going through the structure? So this type of simple uh, level one, level two questions will be done most of the exams. So the anatomy preparation is not something which is very difficult. It's just a usual, you should know the basic anatomy, which is, we all know that this is the anatomy which is going to be with us for the lifelong of a radiologist. So everyone has done two or three years of training will pass anatomy uh, and I have observed it here and there. It's very rare for somebody to fail in anatomy after completing certain degree of uh, two or three years in radiology. Coming to physics and physics is like a helium, liquid helium. It quickly operates with change of temperature of brain, right? And uh, that is what happens if you ask a physics questions. <clears throat> physics preparation is actually a little difficult. Um, some people are very good in physics and most of us are not. Uh, books like Fars and Christensen's are important. You have to understand again the concepts. Fars has been, in every line in Fars has got three or four MCQs attached to it, MRQs or SBS attached to it. To understand Fars, sometimes you have to read a little bit extra book like Christensen's. But there are a few other books. There is online MCQs available, which you have to review. It's previous memory-based MCQs, which has been circulating with the students. Attending few courses for physics will be helpful. And in fact, the physics teacher who will be there in the lecture will clear some of the concepts. And that particular conceptual understanding is important in answering some of the questions. And getting the clear clarity of the concepts is very, very important in, in certain aspects. And then exam, because difficult as we all age, we all know that the physics is something which we don't want to do much. Um, but radiology has got an important component of physics. So if you want to give physics exam, try and do it as early as possible. Try and clear it up. And then uh, you can do anatomy at any time. After that, everything becomes a core radiology knowledge. So this is physics module. This is a set of specimen questions directly from the Royal College website and concerning pump and effect. I remember when I took the exam in 1999, this is the same thing which was there. This particular pump and effect question was there. So, you know, these questions are already there and, and it is now and then these questions do come in the real exam and, and the answer is already there in the website. Um, now, so the physics preparation is, is again individualistic nobody is going to help you in terms of because people who are understanding physics itself is difficult to teach you physics is something which is can be very tough so you have to use all the sort of uh, you know, various books available mcqs available do them repeatedly and understand the concepts and then try and attend few courses and this is where our micr training program uh, and, uh, and the icra teachings becomes an, a very very important concept and Many people actually missed out on the anatomy and physics teaching, which has happened every day of this year on every Monday and Tuesday. It is still happening now on Tuesdays. And, 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 uh, and I'll come to that in a moment. Coming to 2A is a complete testing of your theory knowledge in every subspeciality. So here are the books, concepts, um, books like Dannert's, the green book is important and review articles there will be some questions coming from the recent review articles which are published in clinical radiology radiographics um, european radiology all those things and, and facts there are facts will be asked percentages may be asked and you know need to be aware of that 
this is again there are some courses which will try to teach this but in my personal view there is no need for attending any courses for part 2a because it's just uh, you can there are a lot of books available you go through the books it's again your concepts you should know that you know what are the common things which they have been asking but there are courses if available if you want to attend you know kids it's not a problem they give this an example in the in the website uh, they give you this type of paragraph based question and you have to choose the best answer out of the most likely diagnosis, what is the most likely diagnosis? Yeah. This type of questions. 2B, okay, 2B is where the Chennai FRC course and the other courses are very, very useful because 2B involves Viva and Viva needs a little bit of practice, a little bit of um, honing of the skills, a little bit of technique to handle some of the things. Um, so there is no writing in FRC 2B, there's only typing now because they are using this practice software. So the cases writing and rapid reporting, let's look into the cases writing. Um, there may be six cases in 75 minutes. So you're actually typing. Uh, there may be one more, more than one modality for each cases. Mm, write or type the answers in the following headings in the booklet given, and that is the old one. Now it is all given as a small, small boxes where you have to type in. I'll show you in a moment. And this will be followed by rapid reporting at the same session. Again, 30 cases and 35 minutes. The five minutes has been increased once. Uh, previously, it was not, uh, it was 60 minutes and 30 minutes. But with the electronic thing, the typing variations between individuals, they have added these extra minutes um, as the people are not good in typing. So this is the observations is something which you have to write your positive findings under relevant negative findings. It's important that you are diagnosing a cancer. It's important that you share that there is no, uh, uh, there is no metastatic, there is no enlarged nodes seen in the parietic region or adjacent mesentery or whatever. So relevant negative findings. Interpretation. This is something which is, um, there is a, we always jump to, our training is such that, that if somebody's put up a film, immediately if you say the diagnosis, you are a good radiologist. And that is not the way that training is done in UK or USA. They wanted to know your approach before you reach the diagnosis. Sometimes, yes, it looks nice and you're able to hit it for six. But so they expect you to observe, make your observations and then interpret it. And interpretation is not like your diagnosis. It is just you have to think about what pathological process is happening. So uh, whether it is a masses or a process you observe is benign or malignant or infective or neoplastic or connective tissue or developmental or congenital, the so-called pathological seed is the thought process they expect you at this level. And then you have to say that you know, based on these appearances, I think it is a non-aggressive lesion and most likely a neoplastic process. They want you to hear this sentence before they go into say this diagnosis or principal diagnosis. So based on your interpretation, you should come up with a single diagnosis, which you think is the most likely. Okay, fair enough. And then if you think there are other diagnoses may be there, differential diagnosis, you can actually discuss your differential diagnosis in that section. And then when you discuss the differential diagnosis, don't make a list try and give one or two. This is the same concept goes for the YY as well. So differential diagnosis, some you don't have to give a differential. For some, there may be differential and you have to set up in the differential, say what features supports this particular diagnosis and what features are not supporting these diagnosis is something which you have to give a little bit of discussion after your differential. And then further investigations in management is, uh, can be a clinical management, for example, if you see a subdural collection, then urgent referral is needed. Then there is evidence of brain compression. Similarly, you make a diagnosis of abscess, you can say about a you know, drainage biopsy, um, you know, all those things. So it need be radiological or non-radiological or even clinical. So any relevant uh, further in So this type of five topics, you have to type your uh, this thing. So these boxes will be there by the side of the image in your long cases. So in each of them, you have to write, don't do sentences. You don't have time for this. You just write some, uh, uh, like a bullet points, you just have like a notes, you have to just write it down. And yeast was simple flubble, it's degenerative changes. There is a little atheromatous calcifications in a Toyota. You don't have time for all those things. So what are the most common reasons for failing long cases in FRC? Yeah, this is sort of uh, uh, my understanding and my experience, but I'm sure there are a few more cases out there. 
not attending one or two cases in the due to time pressure. If you miss one case, not even attending, saying something. Even if you type one or two points, uh, even if you type a full stop there, you will get a four, four, four marks there. Four marks is the lowest mark for somebody attending that particular case. Okay, the marking is uh, like four, five, six, seven, four and four. six and seven are good. Uh, seven is a good pass, six is a pass. Um, it is not like out of 10 or out of eight or something. It is just, that's the way it is ranked. Um, five is borderline, four is a definite fail. Um, if you make irrelevant suggestions on further investigations where you already have a patient who has got abdominal aortic aneurysm leak, you are diagnosed it, and instead of suggesting immediately contact vascular surgeon, you suggest MRI and PET CT, you know, you will definitely lose marks there. And then again, if you're not putting at least one reasonable diagnosis, they will not be able to give you a pass mark. And then you just keep on trying to type after the final bell. That means you're exceeding the time limit. Okay, nowadays the computer goes blank, so you might not be able to do that. Coming to rapid reporting. Rapid reporting is a fantastic exam because it is just your ability to separate normal from abnormal. And when we took the exam in 1999, we were the second or third batch, if I'm not mistaken. And that is the time they introduced it. It was a regarded as one of the very toughest course and it was very, very sensible exam because every day you have to, in, in UK, uh, people who are post, uh, having a consult, every consultant radiologist reports, most of them, except maybe some interventionalists and neuroradiologists, um, most of them reports at least about, you know, 3,000, 4,000 x-rays in a year. So 300, 400 x-rays in a week or at least 75 to 80 x-rays a day is a common thing. So when they report, they have to make a decision whether it is normal or abnormal in a matter of about a minute or two. So that is what is tested here. Subtle cases can be there. You should have a review areas because this is where it is most important. And normal ossification of epiphysis centers, accessory ossification centers are normal. Don't worry about it. Degenerative changes are normal. In new guidelines, it, there may be more than one related abnormality, like a fracture scaphoid and avian of the lunit. And many are trauma films. And this is where our training and our, our experience uh, lets, lets down. So you have to make some effort to analyze and assess how to diagnose fractures, dislocation, subluxation properly. So why people fail in RR? Overdiagnosis. Um, it, it is some people are very good in their radiology such that they will diagnose all the subtle problems, uh, but they will fail this particular, I, and I know at least two or three really good radiologists who are excellent diagnosticians failed this because they diagnosed abnormality in every case. Um, not having review areas is an important combination of stress and overconfidence for this session is, is the attitude for this is little different. So you have to handle this very, very carefully. And many people actually aim to pass this exam, but your attitude should be to get everything right. If you can't get 30 x-rays right in your experience of five or six or seven years of radiology in a pack, then, you know, that has to be, uh, so you should aim for 30 out of 30. And, and that gives you that, uh, 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 that particular aim gives, saves you from failing this exam. Coming to Viva. Viva is like four radiologists in two pairs each for 15 minutes, 30 minutes of Viva change room. So now the examiner is in, 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 a, in a Hyderabad at Ari Academy, where you will be sitting in a room. Uh, the examiners are remote, placed in uh, UK. So they will come online and they, they will be showing with the images and you will be talking to the computer. There will be cameras. So you will be talking to the computer and uh, you will be answering them. And again, once the one examiner finishes, the other examiner starts. And then you go out of the room and then go to the other room and do the same thing. So half an hour here and a half an hour there. Total of 60 minutes. They expect you higher level of performance in the interpretation of common and routine examinations. All major subspecialties in radiology are covered. Okay. And your knowledge is very, very important in passing the VIVA. You should ideally go through many mock VIVAs. And this practice is not not really sort of done in many of the medical college departments. You know, every day there has to be a senior person who will call you randomly some of the students and put them x-rays and ask them to talk, make them present. And or otherwise you have to talk to yourself at least to improve your uh, conversation. And then you should know your review areas. You should know how to hit it for six, something which is really obvious. 
and then you should know how to handle the discussion they will expect you to discuss on certain cases and the difficult cases will be there where you don't even have a clue what is actually going on but you should know where to take from particular point and then take the discussion so uh, this type of uh, knowledge and handling of difficult case is important and most of the time i'm i'm not saying this is a difficult exam but it's a really very decent and reasonable exam and they are not trying to sort of get your knowledge as a core neuroradiologist they expect you to be safe as a district general hospital radiologist um they don't want you to be too specialist in in displaying diagnosing rare syndromes Uh, describing is something which is again um we um we tend to sort of there appears to be there may there is suspicious of i am concerned that there is something there i am worried about is there there is evidence of and you can see in most of the reports it always starts with there is evidence of i don't know whether that evidence is uh, coming from just the appearance instead instead the suggestion is use the word there is and then possibility of and that is again totally misused by most of us even in reports everything is possible in a possibility means your confidence is uh, 50% you just want to be sure that you know you are right um, but at the same time even if there is a typical appearance and i have asked many of the students who says possibility of uh, say fibrous dysplasia when i asked them okay tell me a differential because you are saying it is possibility that means there must be more than one possibility should be there and they are not able to come up with a differential so that means you should you are your diagnosis is right that means the possibility of something which actually says that you are not confident of your diagnosis which is the only one which you can think of so you should go for words like suggestive of consistent with you know or if you are 100% happy this is pathognomonic of you know like a, a, a proximal humerus teenage child a fallen fragment sign features are consistent with the simple bone cyst you know gives you that little bit of confidence uh, to the examiner that this guy knows his subject and descriptive words are has to be appropriate not too much description you want to describe it for a second or two or a minute or two and then you summarize your summarize your description in one word one or two sentences and then go for the diagnosis so you take don't take too much time in spending description description and all those things the summarizing is something which sometimes uh, uh, difficult for our students so you have a lesion which you start describing for about uh, one minute and then to make it short as a summary in in one sentence is actually difficult that is again needs practicing say for example uh, again take the simple bones is there is a lytic area uh, located at the proximal humerus and there is a small fragment of bone which is seen at the bottom of the, the uh, bottom of the lesion the margins are well defined narrow zone of transition no periosteal reaction um the facial plate up you normal you say all these things and then you say in summary there is a lytic expansion well defined lesion with a fallen fragment sign that's the sort of summary of the description whatever you have done this is salient features which are consistent with the simple bone cyst so this is exactly sort of you should have a preparation towards this this is something which you can prepare before the exam of course you should sleep and eat well keep your physical and mental health well during the time at professional level professional level last minute preparation can affect the balance of thinking on the spot it's very important that if you don't sleep on ten step that means you know it's not like your mbbs exam or a plus 2 neat exam okay and avoid mobile phones and whatsapp for few days if you can so don't so these are all the do's okay don't don't underestimate any exam over preparation doesn't hurt anyone be a student forever particularly when planning for the exam main issue with the first year is now getting the slot a lot of people waiting in india because of various reasons this uh, exam uh, was not conducted due to covid and things like that and has affected many candidates preparation and their life plans and there are quite a few people with passing parts they are just sort of pending but it's it's not possible for human being to prepare for 5 years and 10 years you know that is also there but that's life don't lose heart uh, because you haven't got a first year doesn't mean uh, anything it may be something better is going to happen for you um coming to our icra ira everyday teaching program on 2021 february onwards we did the curriculum delivery which is actually a phenomenal achievement uh, by itself and and it is something which is um, um which is the uh, world's first and uh, no college in the world has done it uh, no unofficial uh, non governmental body has done it 
in spite of their being more richer and resources are much better. And it is the world's cheapest knowledge share platform ever. From kindergarten to biologists, you think about anything from your private school or even, even some of the government schools to semi-government schools to uh, multi-crore business of Baijus. This is the cheapest knowledge share platform in a thousand rupees for a residence for one whole year of teaching. It's amazing that some of you have not joined for this and two thousand rupees for a consultant in a one year. So obviously, hopefully we are going coming to the end of this year teaching program, but hopefully for next year, please be there so that you can join. Even if you listen to one lecture one day that you will get your money back. Uh, many exam oriented sessions were held. In fact, we had anatomy and imaging anatomy conference every day and viva, uh, how to sort of approach certain things. Viva for EDIR exam, for MSCR exam, for FRCR exam, for DNB exam, MD exam, so many cases, quizzes, and everything was conducted. And, and quite a few residents made it very, very helpful. They, they actually enjoyed it. They actually helped them to prepare for the exam. They're all doing it well. And response is actually is, is average. I'm not saying it's it's worse, but it's average. Uh, uh, I don't know whether it is due to mindset that it's cheaper. That means you're not getting better lectures, but some of the lecturers uh, in this particular research are the sort of top people from every state of India, every, every in the particular subject. Um, but I encourage most of you to subscribe to that every year and make sure that every one of your students, you know, it's, 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 um, it's cheaper than buying your pen drive sometimes right, or your hard disk. Um, so ICRA teachings is something which I recommend to you because it covers most of these exam preparations. That's the key thing. As long as you see the timetable and make sure when it is coming in, the timetable is sent usually sort of a few days earlier, you know what timing it is. Make sure you are free and make sure you attend that. And what about the cost? See, first year part one, Hyderabad is, first year is not a cheap exam. Um, it's uh, costlier in Hyderabad and Singapore, uh, cheaper in UK. I don't know the reason, but uh, there you go. Um, uh, there are some some reasons are there obviously because of the uh, uh, the software involved preparation and all those things and the center costs to get that center and definitely cheaper than traveling to there and taking the exam. And this is sort of cost is there where you can see it's it's actually increasing next year. So now that the November session is over, the next March uh, will be around 536 pounds for one, two year will be 525 pounds and two B will be 736 pounds. And then it is going to obviously go up every year. Um, and in summary, any exam can be passed with appropriate preparation. The process involves some degree of dedication and discipline from your side, okay? What is the use of passing this exam? It may be financial, yes. It may help you to move to a colder weather, maybe give you a bit more junk food or, or whatever. Um, and and it will help you to work in an environment which is sort of very nice and properly planned and, uh, and, and in a department where or one of the excellent colleagues you may be able to find. Uh, but surely it's a self-achievement. It gives you more knowledge. It gives better service to your patients, whether you go to abroad or not, whether you get benefit or financially out of it or not. It gives you a better knowledge and better confidence. And your approach to the cases definitely changes when you pass uh, a broad exam because it gives you the different perspective uh, in relation to the exam. Uh, and the same thing, eh, when BNB is now revamped very well and, and there are a lot of good things about it as well. So uh, even people who have passed MD, you know, should think about taking DNB as well. So thank you very much for listening and I'm very, very thankful to Delhi Subchapter for having me today. And how are we standing for time? Oh, we are close to six o'clock. So we, I'm happy to take some questions, uh, whatever is uh, available. Thank you very much. I'm just stopping the show. Uh, thank you very much, sir. I think this is uh, one of the most comprehensive talks uh, I've ever heard. Uh, even as a student, I, I think uh, this batch is really lucky that they have uh, teachers like you who are, uh, you know, actually outlining everything and how a student should go about it, starting from how you should approach your exam and, you know, what you do before the preparation, during the preparation, and what are you going to get out of it. I think uh, our generation never got people like this. Uh, to uh, you know, tell us everything. And we are very lucky to have you on this platform today and so are all the people who are attending. 
as uh, panelists as well as delegates. And uh, I think the house is open for questions. Uh, I don't see any questions as of now. I invite any delegate to uh, put it in the chat box. And um, so for obvious reasons, sir, I have a question. You did not mention uh, any names of courses or books. So uh, is there a particular site that you would like to refer us to or would you yes, see, mind see, reading? Uh, I thing is that you know for for anatomy and physics and the 2a there are a lot of books are available you go to sort of books for part 2a you will have a lot of them and i i personally don't recommend or or, or i don't know whether it is useful or not but many people this is something which you have to gather from your seniors who has taken the exam because i haven't not i have not read that book but i have found that most of the books are actually useful people who has taken the exam find it that yes sir every every book is useful and uh, some of them are more useful than some of them are less useful. But if I am going to prepare it now, I'll probably study all the books because there's only few MCQ books are available for these exams. So it's better to sort of prepare all of them. And because you have six months gap between the two, and I'm sure even if you spend two hours or one hour a day, you will be able to cover most of the MCQs. It's not that you don't know radiology. You already know radiology. It's not that you're going to read it again for the first time. So doing the MCQs will be much more faster. So you should do as many as possible, ideally. Right. So there is one question, sir, which says, what is the advantage of clearing MICR exams for people who are MD pass and already well settled in India and practicing? Not much. What is the same thing? The same question was posed for EDIR as well. Okay. EDIR exam is also, what is the advantage? See, what is the advantage? That is what I'm trying to say. Is that if you're thinking advantage means actually financial advantage, then there are people who has passed FRC are still sitting in India. It's not sort of, you know, giving them any more advantage than what they're actually there. And it is a it is a self-pride. This MSCR exam is something which the, our college has actually started this curriculum delivery. Again, as I was saying, it's a world's first thing. And when you are delivering a curriculum, you are teaching something, then it is normal for a college to a natural progression to create fellowships, opportunities for our students and create an exam which is of high standard, very high standard, uh, which, which, which we wanted to keep it as cheap as possible. It will be definitely be, um, you know, four to five times cheaper than uh, taking an FRC, FRCR exam. But the standard is high. So once you pass MICR, then you know you are standard. You know where you are standing. You should be able to pass your FRCR like a breeze. So, you know, uh, and MICR, um, how, what is the advantage? It is like um, asking uh, somebody who has started the medical college, the approval for second year will work only come after starting the first year medical college. You all know that. So only after MSCR and then seeing the students like people who has passed MSCR is doing very well. We are hoping that there will be some sort of a national international recognition for that exam. Without having anything, just only on paper, nobody is going to come and say, oh, you people are good, this plan is good and we'll give you recognition. That's just not going to happen. So, um, so this is a dream. This is a, something which a uh, natural thing. We want to do it for our, so it's, it's optional. It's not compulsory. You all know that if, for you practicing in India needs either MD or a DMRD or a DNB. That is the most important thing recognized by the uh, medical council or, or the current the council. So, but all the others, EDIR exam, people take an, a, a long two weeks, three weeks back when I was in Delhi for the EDIR exam, there are three candidates who are more than 60 years of age, came from Pune to take this exam, right? Okay. Amazing, it's really motivating. They said that we just wanted to refresh ourselves with a degree. We just, instead of going to the courses and instead of going to, uh, you know, attending conferences, we thought we will study for six months and take this exam. If I pass, I am fine. They're already well settled. They're all grandpas, you know, they're all, they're all having their own successful practice. So yeah. that advantage is something how you are getting in. Mean, I have seen people who have passed FRCR and sitting sitting in my own city. There are five or six of us here and not one of them has gone to the abroad. And for them, they say it gives me the confidence of practicing it well. And if I'm FRCR, then there is a little bit of respect is there if somebody talks to me, not only clinician, but also a fellow radiologist. And I, my approach is definitely better. And uh, some, some, some hospitals, some, uh, you know, corporate hospitals do give, you know, some sort of a, 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 a honor or some sort of an, uh, maybe a salary advantage 
for somebody right. who has passed. So, right. I totally the MSER, agree with you. MSER will not give you an advantage. It, it has to happen. You know? I want you to sort of, if somebody is MSER, somebody who has passed this MSER, and I would, I would see him as a great person, better than me. So there is a question from Dr. Arun who's asking that where can we get more information about MICR? I think probably they okay, want to be coming to now. It more, yeah, it will be notified today in a couple of days time, three, four days time. It will be done the IRA website. Everybody will have a link which will take them to this thing. The first exam we are planning in January first week. It will be an online exam. Okay. Hopefully we are going to have two centers. Uh, one in north and in south in such a way that it will be an on-site exam, but it will be a computer-based exam. And uh, so so that, that's the preparation is you know, going on for that. So one more question by Dr. Mayang. He says, are DMRDs uh, eligible for FRCR? Yes. Uh, 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 the, the part one, uh, which is the physics and anatomy, you can take up to 12 months of recognized training. And then the part 2A and 2B um, uh, can be taken after two years of training. And 3A and 3B after third year of training. So before you take your 3B, you have to have additional one year of your senior residency or another extra 12 months of post, which uh, obviously needed for you to write DNB or whatever um, is needed. So I'm sure DMRD is eligible. So they need to have that extra one year of uh, senior residency if they have that certificate then of course they can write all three parts. All right. So are there any uh, courses for FRCR part one sir, running in India? Uh, part one course is, um, in, we used to run in Coimbatore, the anatomy and physics two day conferences. That was like uh, about four or five years ago. Um, and uh, uh, there are physics courses run in Hyderabad and, uh, and, and there are some online anatomy and physics. The RE Academy has started some of the teaching courses as well. So there are some courses you have to just keep a watch and not many are there in fact because anatomy most of the people there's not much attendance because most of them know that they are going to pass anatomy but physics yes you need to attend some courses to refresh your physics knowledge so there was one more question from dr arun he's saying that how many sessions of micr will be held i think you already answered the uh, one in the north and south and like yeah. how many years will it take to complete the exam <laughs> depends on whether you pass or not <laughs> okay. I think you mean in what stages yeah, and see, what he wants yeah, to do because all parts are together or yeah, exactly. So you pass your part one anatomy and physics. Okay, once you pass, then the next sitting will come in the next six months for your part two A and part two B. In the following six months, you will have a session of part two A, part three A and part B. So it it will overall it will be we wanted to keep it as a within one year. We will have two sessions of part one, two sessions of part two, and two sessions of part three. So the people who can pass, they can take it subsequently. Yeah, so he's thanking you. So uh, um, I would now thank you very much, sir. You really answered and uh, all the delegates were stuffed to the uh, talk. I realized that there were not a single person had moved out during the entire session. I think this thank is really you. a great uh, lecture today and it has opened eyes of a lot of people and very motivating and inspiring. And I think it will be uh, very inspiring for a lot of consultants, even like us, who uh, would like to refresh their knowledge. And I assure you that we will be joining the ICRI lectures in the next uh, slot for sure. So uh, yeah. can I invite now Dr. Anjali Prakash and Dr. Asin to just um, wind up the session and thank sir. Dr. Asin can come in first and ma'am, then uh, could you thank him? Thank you, thank you Shalini and thank you Anjali and Asin and your team. Thank you so much Dr. Anbarasu. It was a wonderful, wonderful talk. And it, uh, it shows your experience in this field. Uh, I think for last more than 10, 15 years, I think it's been more than 10 years since you came back to India, maybe 2009, probably. Yeah, close 2007. 2007. <laughs> and, and since then, you, you've been um, teaching and imparting and disseminating this experience and knowledge of yours. I'm sure there are hundreds of people across India who benefited from your way of uh, disseminating your experience and your knowledge. And we are fortunate today to have you here and the people who listened, including us, Thank giving you. or not giving FRCR, but we are definitely knowledgeable now. <laughs> uh, and I think uh, ma'am has already cleared Dr. Anjali, if I am correct. Yes. So, yes. Uh, <laughs> so thank you so much, sir. It was a pleasure hosting you.
over to you ma'am thank you atin very kind of you to have me thank you sir thank you it was a very motivating lecture and i'm all ready to attempt to be again so <laughs> i had a problem in rapid reporting i'm saying it on a public platform but uh, yes it was uh, i did not start the exam to go abroad it was just to refresh my knowledge and what i learned was that it was a very good way of training for clinical radiology yes. how to write a report and what is important and i think rapid reporting is something which we don't teach our uh, residents you know yes. this normal abnormal thing and in an emergency setting which is the most important i think uh, part yes. is lacking in our training and i sort of took it to learn what is what we are lacking in and what i am lacking in so this has been a very motivational talk for me sir personally and i hope to take this exam and i'm sure there are lot of benefits for this uh, if with your permission we'll put up this lecture on our website as well yeah, for please. our uh, students so and definitely looking for forward as i was telling the for physics yes but yes. once you reach the yes, part to the level there is no age bar you can go and take it any time it's, it's you will definitely pass thank you <laughs> thank you on that positive note i think thank you once again for uh, gracing our platform sir thank you thank you very much for having me thank you sir once again with this we come to the end of this master class session we are indebted to dr anna barasu for being here with a very very special guest and amidst all the festivities it was really an honor for us to have you here today and i thank all the delegates and panelists uh, for being here today evening and we will see you next time again next saturday at 5 o'clock thank you very much to all the panelists Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir.